are interested in making yourself better, if you are interested in learning new things, especially those things that are needed by industry, which will pay money, which will give you a better quality of life, then why not? So this is, I've been trained for, uh, I've got a PhD in business economics, so that's the only place I'm staying, shouldn't be something that you should actually put on your belt. The question is, how can I improve myself? How can I earn something better? What is it that I need to learn? As I said, even if you are a software, uh, 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 a typist, and you actually use Word, you can actually learn to improve yourself so that whilst people are typing 100 words per minute, you can do 200. And by so doing, you get a job, you get a better money, and you're laughing all the way to the bank. So learning is lifelong. As I said, from cradle to the grave. And all of you should have this at the back of your mind. Don't be satisfied with what you have or what you do. As I said, the most important thing in your life is to be ready at all times to give up what you are for what you might become. Take a case of the lady I met on the flight, Las Vegas. Corporate lawyer, $10,000 uh, a month just by learning how to dance and dancing in the casinos. She quadrupled her salary. And she says, PK, I'm having a great time of my life. And dancing is not as demanding as corporate law. And yet I earn well, I have a great life, and I can even help other people. It all comes out of what? Learning. Never give up. It doesn't matter you are 60, you are 70. At any point in time, you can always learn something new, improve your human capital, and if you are clever enough to determine those skills that will bring you better income and a better quality of life, then by all means, go for it. It's not impossible to learn things. You can actually learn. It's a mindset. Leadership, for example, I learned it myself because somebody said, PK, if you want to double your salary, treble your salary, leave your business economics, study leadership, and go off to China. And I teach in China two days for $5,000 leadership. You know, so this is to encourage you to understand. I'm reviewing you. So I also had a list of things that you said you would do that you didn't do. And I would have my evidence. So when they say, oh, who's reviewing Rosie? They all say, um, I'm busy today. And I'm like, ah, you can be busy until tomorrow. I'll be waiting with my files. Use that opportunity to ask the questions because your reviews are a safe space for you as well. Don't focus so much on your weakness. Just make sure that your weakness does not take away from what you can achieve. So make sure at least you can deal with it. If you know that it's finance, at least study online, finance for non-finance people. So you are not so lost when people are talking about balance sheet and they, they say, oh, BS, and you are thinking they are saying something completely different when they, all they are saying is balance sheet. So you've got to make sure that your weakness does not detract away and then hone in on your strengths and make sure that you've got that as an edge. The last point on that slide is my job or my life. So you hear more now and about the balance. People used to talk about work-life balance. Now we've moved into work-life integration because life is what we're doing. And work now sits squarely within our life, especially since we work from home. You call people, their babies will be crying. They'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I have to drop my child in this. I've got to go to the hospital. Then you're like, okay, can we chat in two hours? So you see how much work has intruded into our life. So what is your focus? Is it, is it just a job or is it your life? If it's your life, then give it purpose. All these are interconnected. So when we talk about reskilling and upskilling, I already mentioned that we did things. You all heard about e-levy, and everybody was upset. They're going to take our money. But there are so many people selling online, and you know that. 
For the longest time, I only buy my stuff on Instagram. I don't know who made this dress. I bought it on Instagram. I asked for it. I paid online. They delivered to me online, all the way from Lagos, Nigeria. Why shouldn't government take money on that? Are you kidding? Who's going to look after our nation? So all those things have changed because we are delivering in different ways. We are working in different ways. So when you talk about reskilling, reskilling is much more difficult to do than upskilling. When you reskill, you are learning new skills, usually for a totally new job. And you heard Prof talk about that. So when you think around what's going on in the world today, how should you reskill? What should you look out for? What is changing so rapidly around you that's making you uncomfortable? Because being uncomfortable is a good thing. It means that something has to change. When you look at upskilling, you're building on your skills in order to optimize your delivery. So if I learn, new, use neuroscience to coach, I do know how to coach, but I'm adding something to give me the edge over the next coach. I'm learning something to augment what I know. And that is the whole essence of reskilling. What happened on 6th of June? Can anyone tell me? I'm sure you all know this. What happened on 6th of June this year? I'm not going to preach to you about curiosity, but think about it. Huh? It's a good thing to have. What did Apple do? Apple launched their headset. It is a headset that gives you the ability for spatial communication. You are Michael, and you are okay. The two of you stand here. Who is getting the phone? Is it? Eugene. Eugene or? Olivia. Is it Eugene or Olivia? Olivia. How many want Olivia? Let me see by hand. 45%. How many want Eugene? Oh, 44.5%. Round two. All right. Um, Rosie, what do we do? One of them has been given a book as consolation. Consolation. Is it Olivia, is it Olivia or Eugene? Olivia or Eugene? Olivia. How many think it's Olivia? How many think it's Eugene? And the winner is Olivia. Olivia Na Obodai. Just tell us, just tell us the first three digits of your phone, phone number. Just tell us the first four digits and you win the phone. 0506. It is indeed 0506 and Olivia Na Obodai gets to win. Oh, where's Eugene? Eugene went away with his book. All right, so Olivia, that's yours. young people to take advantage of the opportunities that are out there. And then look at the outdated curricula. I graduated from KNUSD 23 years ago. I don't want my lecturers to hear this, but I hated university. I was studying something that I was doing a degree in art, and I was doing book art. How is that? Art for art's sake. And then our uh, Classmates who were doing architecture and all the engineering courses would laugh at us because, oh, look at those artists. If you couldn't go into medical school or even social science, then, oh, just go to College of Art. But some of us were there because we truly were talented and gifted. So if I tell you 99% of my mates 
that I graduated with ended up in the banks. Sad, right? Why were you in the College of Art? Now, when that happened, as I said, I really didn't enjoy university because I knew that the world was big and the oyster, my oyster was bigger than what I was studying. And a lot of you know my stories. So I don't want to stress on that. But I found myself working in a carpentry workshop. And that was when I realized that the curriculum that we were using 23 years ago. So now you can imagine, fast forward, curricula really hasn't adapted to meet the needs of industry. So you're training our graduates that are coming out, but they're not meeting the demands of industry. So this is something that we're working at the policy level with our Ministry of Education and all the relevant stakeholders to quickly bring and bridge the gap between academia and industry so that we quickly look at how we can adapt the curriculum to meet these demands. Then I also talked about the poor perception of TVET. They laughed at us when I was in university. And I was in university. So you can imagine for learners who don't have the opportunity to enter university, what that looks like, right? I talked about very little industry academic interaction. So you are a professor, you've never been on a site, but you say you are training engineers. Engineers who come wearing white coats, but yet they are expected to get into the trench. Because even if you are supervising the artisans that are working on, you should know what they are doing. You sh then what sort of supervisor are you? So look at what is also happening. Then I would like to stress on this mindset shift about precision quality. How do we do things and do it properly? You see the roadside artisans that we know. When you go and buy a piece of furniture and you are buying four, every single piece of furniture will be different because they have this thing of, oh, buga buga, oh, but madam, even if the chair is 13 point, whatever, just take it like that, that is fine. Why are you being so difficult? And you know why? Because we don't have this understanding that when you're doing things, you're competing globally. But the second one, the way to succeed is what we call human efforts. Human efforts are the things that God expects you to be doing yourself in order to partner with him to succeed. And that is where the problem is. A lot of people are praying their way into success. But success alone is not a product of prayer, but a product of divine efforts and human efforts. And that is where the problem is. People are praying about things that God wants them to fix. Nobody goes to where you make Toyota and say, as I clap my hands and pray, let the parts appear. <laughs> like this morning, when you went to bath, maybe, <laughs> some people didn't bath. <laughs> when, when you went, went to bath, you didn't say, as I clap my hands, let soap rub over my body. It doesn't happen that way. So even when it comes to marriage, you may pray about it, God may link you to something, but to sustain the marriage is human efforts. So most of the people who divorce, they only come and complain about things this person didn't do, this person did. You know, so human efforts are important. So if you read the scripture, please go ahead. The Bible says that unless the Lord builds, the builder built in vain. So there is a God who helps the builder to build. Without God, the builder built in vain. And without the builder, there is no building. And that is why the problem is. You cannot pray your way into first class in school. You need to sit down and study. And sometimes God will even make sure you fail because there's nothing in your head. One day when they call you to go and give a speech somewhere, you will mess up. And unfortunately, you, may, you say that you know God. <laughs> so there are a lot of things that a lot of people are not getting because they are, they are praying their way into success. They are praying their way to get things. The things that God expects them to be doing themselves, they are praying their way, you know, to get it. And it doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, in Africa, we pray more than we do. Unfortunately, in Europe too, they do more than they pray. And so they also have problems. We also have problems. 
Because you need both to succeed. Are you here with me? So if you're praying and you're doing what you're supposed to do, you are unstoppable. Because you need both to be able to succeed in anything that you do. You know, most of the things that, you know, you go to school and you learn, it's only the practical things that is, is supposed to make sure, make sure that you do what you're supposed to do. And when we read Mark chapter 16, verse 20, the Bible says that, and the Lord was working with them, confirming his word with signs and word. He worked with them. So there is always a component of human efforts and divine efforts. So all the... persevere enough and not give up because every dream would finally give way to a persistent dreamer so those people who don't achieve their dreams it's not because their dream was not viable but because they gave up at some point in time so all these things you realize that human beings have to be working one of the things you notice about all icg churches you know last last week i was at takradi with them for five days you know <laughs> fijai branch uh, watered gardens. I was there for five days for a seminar with them. Five days. And every ICGC church you enter into is, is different. Everything is on point. This meeting, for example, I knew will start on time. I knew. So when I was coming, I wanted to be here right before time because I knew ICGC will start before time. It wasn't by prayer. It's by planning. Do you understand what I'm saying? People had to intentionally think about it. So without intentional step, God is helpless. Let me say a big thank you to um, Constance Swanika for your thoughts. You really made my day. Thank you so much, Constance, for these thoughts. Isaac Newmanatha. Isaac we've known for, for years and he's always on point. Thank you, Isaac. We've been joined in this conversation by a youth development consultant and a certified counselor, Kafui Mills Odwe. Kafui. Tell me, what was going through your mind as they shared their thoughts? I believe that where we are now, the challenge young people have are things around agency, amplifying their voice. They also have the challenge of resilience and how they deal with shocks. Now, all these are linked to how they can find jobs maintain the jobs grow in the jobs whether it's wage-based or jobs they have created and hearing the, the the nuggets that were shared it's all around how you can reinvent yourself when the external circumstances hit you hard you have reinvented the way we look at skills by focusing on an aspect that we've always tried to downplay mediocrity and you have focused on ways in which you can leverage on the different components of skills knowledge abilities that you have that you can hone in and make your, your, your high level networking learning and fellowship it's about raising leaders and shaping vision to influence society through christ Practical Christianity Hangouts, exploring biblical answers to questions on economics, finance, leadership, governance, and the contemporary issues of our time. ICGC, the New Wine Temple, East Lagon, this and every Wednesday from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. There will be a power networking and cocktail session right after the program. Prepare to be paid sitters in your family, ministry, business, finance, profession, governance, and your social life. Practical Christianity Hangouts. Join us this Wednesday even and bring a friend. ICGC New White Temple. We are one big family in Christ. Hello, everyone. 
A very good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Pastor Albert and Lady Comfort Okran, I warmly welcome you to ICGC, the New Wine Temple. I thank you for spending your evening with us, both in person and to our online family as well. Kindly make time and share the link and be a blessing to someone. A very special welcome to our season finale of our fantastic PCH. Tonight, we'll be sharing with you jobs and opportunities in agribusiness and technology in the digital media. Please, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather once again. Thank you for protecting us as we traveled and providing an opportunity to meet, learn, and grow. We pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit to bring guidance and wisdom, and the purpose of this meeting will be fulfilled in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Last week was fireworks in this auditorium. We are, it was a fully packed house with our friends from DTI, UPSA, and Demonstration School for the Deaf. Our speakers were something else. And as always, we always bring you the very best. Tonight, we'll give you our season, we'll crown everything all for you tonight as we go on break. And we also have a wow moment after the session. Who's winning anything tonight? You are not winning anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> So PCH is a graduate of Leaders and Leaders in the Making. It's a mentoring program where we bring you Christian professionals to share their experiences with you and also to network with each other. It is very important, as I always say, to make a friend, take somebody's contact. You never know. So the program started at 5 p.m. with our mentoring and coaching session. And I believe that it's been a blessing to all those who participated. As I always say, this program was designed purposely with you in mind. So you are an integral part of the program. We would love to hear from you. Kindly send us your question. Share your experiences with us. Your feedback, comment on all our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. Or simply send us a WhatsApp on 0249-999000. Are you ready for another interesting session? With a round of applause, shall we please welcome the host of PCH, Pastor Albert O'Krine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Once again, a warm welcome to the final edition of our PCH Season 2 Hangouts. We've had a wonderful 11 weeks of learning back to back with different resource persons, and I'd like to ask you to kindly put your hands together. First, for our resource persons. Let me also acknowledge our mentors who have been so, so, so amazing and respectfully ask our mentors here to rise to your feet and let's give them that wonderful round of applause for all of them thank you thank you so much thank you so much oh i want to hear the applause that reflects your appreciation 11 weeks of working with you week after week after week god bless you all so much absolutely incredible thank you so much please be seated it's a source of great joy to us to see what has happened in this place in the past 11 weeks since the 12th of March. We have recorded incredible numbers of people coming in to discuss job readiness, job placement, repositioning, and we set out on this journey anchored on a simple verse in the Bible that from Genesis 12 verse 1 where God said to Abraham leave your father's house and your familiar surroundings to a land that I will show you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing interestingly in the first six sessions 
where we explored stepping out into the unknown, our resource persons, one after the other, shared a story of how they left familiar surroundings, how they were guided by the Lord, how they progressed in their careers and businesses, and then finally, how their lives are now impacting other people beyond them. In the second season of our conversation, we moved on to making a difference and try to challenge ourselves that we can make a difference wherever we find ourselves. We wanted to challenge every participant, every person here, either as a member of this church or any of the institutions we are inviting or the general public or somebody watching online that you can make a difference. And in these conversations, we've looked at the spirit of excellence, how to stand out wherever you found yourself. We're very privileged in the last three editions, after eight successful episodes, to be partnered by the Springboard Ratio Foundation and the Ghana Growth Program for three specialized editions. And the first one was on ATVET, or Technical and Vocational Skills. And so we were very privileged to have, for the first time, the founder of DTI, as well as Helenes, join us. And Constance Swanika shared lessons about opportunities in the area of technical and vocational skills. She was joined by Dr. Isaac Newman Arthur, who shared about discovering your talents and creating multiple streams of income. The second in th this set of three was on skills, reskilling and upskilling last week. And we had Professor P.K. Richardson, who last night flew back to the Manchester base where he is as a visiting lecturer at the Manchester Business School, and Rosie Ebeatha sharing with us how to upskill and how to reskill. Today, in the final edition in this series to reconvene in the month of August, we'll be looking at the third pillars of our conversations, and that is agriculture, agribusiness, and technology. I know that this particular conversation is of great interest to all of you here because several of you have specifically asked that we have a session on this. So it's the final one before we begin our 40 days of power tomorrow, and we are excited that we can bring you this conversation to close this season. It's important to mention that the two people we are bringing tonight are top practitioners in their fields, haven't done it for years, and impacted many lives. Both of them are very known to us, and we've traveled with them, Comfort and I, around the country and impacted different audiences. But before they come, permit me to first acknowledge the institutions that are here with us, um, joining us today. So let me start from my extreme left with the University of Professional Studies, UPSA. Let's see a round of applause for UPSA. UPSA, let me see you wave your right hand. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, let me acknowledge the learners from the Design and Technology Institute, DTI. A round of applause for DTI. All right, last week we had an amazing time with our friends from the Demonstration School for, for the Deaf in Ecropon. Let's welcome them. Oh, you are clapping because you are new. When we get to the Demonstration School, you don't clap, you do this. So let's acknowledge our friends from the Demonstration School for the Deaf in the Gropong. Ha! Huh. Now, that's it. That's it. So thank you all, our friends here at the New Wine Temple. New Wine Temple, let's see you. Aha! Uh -huh. All right. And then the final one for all those joining us across the continents of the world online. Let's welcome our online audience. Thank you very much. Two things I'll say and then I'll introduce my guests for today. The first... I'll bring on Dr. Isi Hassan in a minute and ask her a few questions about job opportunities. But before that, I hear that 
the conversation last week about the wow moment was as intense as the conversation about the, the lessons. So today I almost withdrew the wow moment so that it doesn't distract us from the learning. Do we promise that we will still learn and still have fun with the wow moment? Do we promise? All right, so for the final day, we have stepped up the wow moment. The first, the third prize winner will win the exercise watch and then the book for the third prize winner. Let's put our hands together. The second prize winner for the wow moment today gets a brand new mobile phone smartphone for your learning for your exploration for making life simple for yourself and then today for the first time and the, the final time in this series the first prize winner gets a brand new laptop <laughs> who's getting it who's getting the laptop all right i hope that your slip your 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 voucher is in the, in, the, in the box that we will pick it from. If you have not filled your voucher, make sure you fill it. And make sure your name is correct and you have your Ghana card. <laughs> All right. This program is being done in part by the New Wine Temple in partnership with the Ghana Growth Program, which has partners including the MasterCard Foundation, the Springboard Ratio Foundation, and Limehouse. The job placement partner on this program is the Axis Human Capital. And last week, we saw a very interesting presentation on jobs that are available in Agric, ATVET, and these spaces. I'm going to ask um, a rep from Axis to climb up and just have a couple of minutes conversation about the available opportunities right now. And guess what? Dr. AC Ansa. Doc, good to see you. So, Doc, the conversation last week was about the fact that they could actually go online here and apply for any of these jobs mm -hmm. and, hey, presto, mm -hmm. they've moved from unemployed to employed. Yes. There are a number of final year students here. There are a number of people watching us online who are unemployed. There are a number of people who are, have finished school are unemployed. There are a number of people in the informal sector who also are unemployed. Mm -hmm. What do they do? All right. So, if you're here and you are interested in finding a new job or career opportunity, let me see you by hand. Okay. If you are in DTI and you are graduating, when do you finish? Next month, July, right? Wow. All right. So the opportunity is right at your doorstep. Um, one of the things you can do is to, if you have a phone, you can scan the QR code. We have jobs that are listed across different industries and across different levels, all right? And so don't sit and think, oh, it's asking for senior managers, etc. We all start from somewhere. So there are roles in different industries. We're looking for cashiers. We're looking for cooks. We're looking for farmhands. We're looking for people in restaurants. We're looking for people in retail shops. We're looking for people in agro-processing firms, all right? And so if you're looking, okay, so we have um, executive assistant, we're looking for people in procurement and supply chain, we're looking for people in finance, you know, IT. You know the one I like, investment analyst, operations director, front yes. desk executive, office yes. manager, commercial yes. manager, project yes. manager, and project solutions manager. Listen, yes. whatever your taste, whatever your qualification, the simple thing is you just make sure you are in this database and you yes. have this somewhere. And if you love somebody and they've been bugging you about getting a job, take a screenshot of this so that they can scan the QR code or they can sign up. Yes. If what they like is not here, it may come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. As long as they keep refreshing, yes, they'll find out. Yes, because we're, we're adding on. And it's not just Accra. As time goes on and as we move around, etc., the roles will be Accra, Cape Coast, Kumase. You know, so please do keep an eye on this so that you can always see the fresh additions and then we'll engage you and then do our placement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for Dr. AC Ansar sharing job opportunities available to people who may be looking for a job. We'll have this conversation 
um, even more as we get into the presentations. Today we have a fine, fine business leader who left her job in banking to go into farming. When you call her an agribusiness entrepreneur, she says, call me a farmer. I love to be called a farmer. So I call her my favorite farmer, and I love her for that. She will be coming up shortly, but before she comes, there is somebody who has made digital media very, very simple in this country by showing us where the world is heading and how we can be part of it. And Maximus and Catherine, our speakers for today, give them your attention, and then when they finish, like you did last week, ask them very difficult questions, and they'll be available to support you. Right after this video introduction, we'll receive Maximus Ametogo. Maximus Ametogo is a digital marketing strategist, social media coach, technology consultant, conference speaker, workshop facilitator, and writer. He has worked for both local and global brands in areas of digital marketing, social media marketing, app development, advertising, training, and visual communication. Some of the brands and companies he has trained, worked, and consulted for include Newmont Ghana, MTN Ghana, Access Bank Ghana Limited, European Union Delegation to Ghana, African Leadership Institute, UT Bank Ghana Limited, Latinia Travel and Tour, British Council Ghana, The Soft Tribe, Imani Center for Policy and Education, Peace and Cousins, Charterhouse Ghana, and many more. Maximus has shared his insights on topical issues and technology issues on major local media houses such as BBC 101, 3FM, Joy 99.7 FM, City 97.3 FM, GTV, TV3, Live FM, and many more. He is a graduate of the University of Ghana Legon and Digital Marketing Institute of Ireland. He is the managing director of Pop Out and is based in Accra, Ghana. With a resounding round of applause, welcome, Maximus Amitabur. Hello. Good evening. Thank you very much, Rev. That was a documentary. In fact, that was the first time I've seen a documentary of myself. <laughs> It's a pleasure uh, getting the opportunity to share industry insight. And usually, I get happy to speak to young people because at our time, during our time, we didn't have the opportunity to get industry people to come and at least share an idea with us to know the next step to take after school or what to do you know, with ideas in your head. And I'm, quite, I'm very grateful to Reverend Albert Okram for this opportunity to share on jobs and opportunities in the digital space. And I want to also acknowledge Dr. Isi Ansa. She's one of my, my, what do I say, mentors. I, I follow her. She's given me opportunity to speak at Ashes University a couple of times to share the same you know, ideas that I have. So what I'm going to share here is a list of jobs and then the skill sets that you need. You're going to get more than 70 jobs in the digital media space. 70, more than 70 of it during this presentation. So I'm going to give you that and I've categorized them into various what I call job pillars. So the first one, I usually want to share data, right? So if you are talking digital media, the digital media space, cyber space, or whatever we call it, the internet, the website, we are people who spend time and money on various digital platforms, assessing various types of content you know, on their mobile phones, their tablets, uh, their laptops, even game, gaming consoles and all that. And all these people, or all the content that being created require some level of skills. So with the numbers, we have over 5.4 billion people who use mobile phones globally, right? So that's a huge number if you're thinking digital. So if you want to have a skill, at least you have an idea of the market size that you are looking at. 
So you have the 5.4 billion people who use mobile phones globally. We have 5.1 billion who use internet. So when you check, that's more than one out of two people in the world who have access to the internet or use internet for various uh, work or skills or uh, education or learning. And uh, quite a huge number of the 5.1 billion people, you know, more than 94% of them are active on social media. You know, initially, I'm sure if, if I ask you how many of you are not on social media, you know, you, you raise up your hands. But right now, if I say how many of you are on social media, I'm sure everybody, right? Who is not on social media here? Raise your hand. You are not on social media. WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. So I can see like three or four people. Right, so the, the, the current data shows that almost 60% of the world's population are active on, on, on social media. Now when you come to Ghana, the numbers are almost similar to the global. Right, 43 million mobile subscriptions. So mobile subscriptions is the number of mobile uh, uh, cellular services that people use, irrespective of the number of networks that you have. Or like the global one, which is unique uh, mobile users. And we have 23 million internet users in Ghana. So that's a huge number that we are looking at. 23 million means that 68% of our population in Ghana use internet. So if you want jobs, at least you are guaranteed that you are going to serve 68% of the population of Ghana, and about 6.6 .6 million of them are, you know, using uh, social media. So they are active on that platform. So now if you are thinking digital, you should be thinking mobile, you should be thinking what? Social media. So we'll look at the various jobs or the skill sets that you need to also be relevant in this age. Now, I've talked about this particular slide, 23 million internet users. You know, when you, when you compute the number of people who use, the, the number of WhatsApp accounts in Ghana, we are running to 19 million WhatsApp users in Ghana. So that's a huge number that we are looking at. And we see how you can also use WhatsApp effectively. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and LinkedIn. Now, I've categorized the jobs into what I call job pillars to make it easier for all of us to understand. So the job pillars, we have the concept, we have company, we have communication, we have channels, we have content, we have consumers, we have community, campaign, and then commerce, conversion, crisis, and configurations. So what the digital skills that I'm going to talk about, the jobs and opportunities can be categorized in these various, you know, job pillars, right? So the first one, when it comes to concept in the technology space, which is driven by innovation and what we call disruption, they need people who can think out of the box, people who can innovate, can look at physical problems and treat it with digital solutions that, you know, can have market value and local relevance that can scale so you can make money. Right, so companies are looking for people who have that creative thinking, that can design an idea. The Facebook was somebody's idea. Amazon is somebody's idea. Tesla is somebody's idea. Apple was somebody's idea. Now, Apple has given us the opportunity to even build apps onto the app stores, right? We have millions, centers of millions of apps on the app stores. Because of one idea to create a marketplace for apps, just one idea. Now billions of, of, of people or billions of apps have been developed on that platform. So you're looking at market researchers, right? So when, when you are developing a concept, of course, you need to know what the market demands, right? Normally they will say you have to look for the gap in the market, but you also have to look at the market in the gap. Right, whether your idea is relevant enough. So we are looking at innovators, we are looking at product design, those who design the product. So Facebook is a product, 
Your mobile phone is a product, the laptop is a product, any app you are using is also a product. We are looking at artificial intelligence, and now everybody is talking about artificial intelligence, the fact that we are training machines to think like human beings so that what we do repeatedly will be done by machines. And then the huge bank of information that we have can now be computed by a machine in a very simple, easy way, and they can return results anytime you query the platform. So when you go there, okay, which country is Ghana? Chat GPT can give you a long list of a profile on Ghana. It is somebody's idea. Somebody thought and conceptualized that and developed it. We have blockchain, we have cryptocurrency, and we have virtual reality. So virtual reality is a, is a virtual treatment of our physical world. So we have all the Googles that you wear that you can move around in a different, in a different world. Now, there's something they call augmented reality, which is a marriage between the physical and the virtual. So I can wear the Google, see you physically, but I can see a screen in front of me. I can interact, I can do Zoom with people, and that's where the world is heading. And these are idea-driven uh, concepts. So you need to develop that skill. If you have a rich imagination, you are in the right place. And welcome to digital uh, media. The next pillar is company. Now, a lot of companies are born before computers, right, BBC. And they are struggling to digitalize. So they need people with various skill sets. So digital transformation manager, they need innovation manager. You know, innovation manager has been in the space for a very long time. But currently, if you're an innovation manager and you cannot think digital, you cannot think about how you can run the business using digital tools and channels. You may lose your job, even though you know something about innovation. So the traditional thinking about innovation will be formatted by the digital space. So under the company, we have a list of, uh, of skill sets. So disruption managers. So disruption managers are people who are paid to just think about the next type of laptop, the next mobile phone. Can you believe that industry experts think that the mobile phone you are holding is outdated? So they are thinking of another device that will take over from the laptop, the mobile phone you are using currently. And I'm sure if you check the Apple Vision Pro they just launched, where you wear Google, you can make phone calls, you can just use eye gestures to control icons. These are wild stuff that the people are thinking. And companies need people who can think out of the box, right, to deliver, develop that. So innovation managers, E-commerce managers, of course, digital communication. I have a list of them, cybersecurity managers. Now, when you are running your emails, websites, and things, you need somebody to be the gatekeeper, somebody who will protect the, uh, the online channels of the company so that people don't breach the company's uh, online channels so they can hack their website or emails and the rest. This is a skill set requirement for companies. The next one, communication. Communication is very key, and this is what we're doing, how we connect, send message, and then get feedback, and feed it back into how you design your messaging for your target audience. So that is communication. And people, you are supposed to have the skills to be able to talk to an audience irrespective of their age group. Right, that's a specialization. Now, if you socialize a lot, if you engage people a lot, if you interact with people a lot, you may have that natural or innate ability to be able to connect with people through the communication you know, uh, pillar. So you can be a visual communicator like a designer. That's how we call it, visual communicator. So you communicate using visuals or designs. Then you can have the digital communication person. Now, this is a new course that is even being run on some of the campuses. So initially, it was communication manager. So you look at how you can send messages through TV, radio, newspaper, billboards, or out-of-home uh, channels. Now, we have digital communication manager looking at websites, social media, apps, and all the other digital channels that people are consuming content on. So you have online marketing managers, you have email marketers. 
Some people, they have expertise in composing emails that can sell products instead of just telling people about products, right? So we have that, and then we have even Shadow Manager. The company have a list of messaging that they need to pipe through the digital channels. They need somebody to even schedule it. That Mondays, this is the content we share. Tuesday, this is what happens. Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, you know, Sunday, and all of that. And it's the job of a schedule manager. So that's for communication. We have a lot of other uh, job or opportunities within that space. Now, when you come to channels, which is one of my favorite websites, you can have the skills to develop websites. Now you can learn websites. You can go on YouTube, learn WordPress. You can design a website. The more you do it, the better you can do it. That is the, the, the fortunate thing about skill development, right? If you learn more about web uh, development, you can design websites for people. Companies are looking for people who can design websites, and this is something you can even do part-time, right? You are in school, you can advertise, you can design people's personal website, companies' website, e-commerce website. There are over 15 types of websites that you can design for people and earn money whilst in school, right? So you have to look at that. App development, of course, you need a bit of enhanced skills to develop apps. So whether you are doing for Android or iOS or the web, you can learn how to develop app. And app developers are in high demand. Now, for a company to be employ an app developer, you have to incentivize them with some huge you know, salaries and, and incentives before they can stay. Now, they, they want to work as freelance. They want to work on, them, on their own. Then we have the database developers. They, you know, do the coding. How many of us know about coding? Yes, yeah, so if you know about coding, coding is more like the language, the machine uh, learning language. We will speak naturally, computers understand codes. So that's how you instruct them to do that. So for channels, you have that. Now we even have something exciting in the gaming sector. I'm also an esports enthusiast. Right, so the video games you play, people design it. And typically when you pick just a video game, the one who comes out with the character, right, in the video game has a skill. The one who designs the, the animation has a skill. The character, the fashion, the dresses that the apparel or the dresses that the, the characters wear, somebody's also skills. Right, the environment, whether they are jumping on the mountain, on a hill, or through a river, is somebody's imagination to us. Well, that's also another skill that you can also you know, have in, the, in, the, in that space. Then when you design a website, we have what they call a search engine optimization. You have Google, Yahoo, Bing. These are <clears throat> platforms, they are like virtual assistants. So you tell them, oh, I want information on Ghana. So you go and type, information on Ghana into Google, and then they, they return a list of write-ups on Ghana for you. Those are search engines. And we need people who can even design websites that understand the requirements of all these search engines, right? The Yahoo's and the Google search and the rest. So that when I design a website and people are looking for the services I offer or the company name, the search engines will return a, a, a response with my name either on the top or the first page or second page. So that's the search engine, whether specialist, strategist, manager, they have all the range of, 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 of levels for it. <clears throat> then we have traffic. The traffic managers, so web traffic managers, are people who make sure that <clears throat> when you design the website, people know about it. So they make sure they point people to the website, they go and visit there, read about it, buy the product, or uh, if they are even going to do live chat or support services, they can, they can get that too as well. Then we have the artificial intelligence developers. And if you are a designer, one of the key skills is what we call user experience design. When I say user experience design, <clears throat> when you pick an app, where the logo is, where the icons are, how 
everything is arranged where a picture appears or a video appears. It's what they call the user interface design. Now, when you click on it, how those things respond is what we call user experience. So people's, some people have just specialized in those two areas. So that when you design an app, it should be user friendly so that people will not find it difficult navigating or going around or looking for whatever product they want to find. So user experience is one of the key products. Now when you pick any device, how you see whether a TV, where the buttons are and things, is also part of the, that user experience design and user interface design. So that's for channels. And there are people who they cannot design <coughs> the interface, they cannot design the user experience. But when you design the product, they can tell you this one wasn't done well, this should have been here, and what they call product analysts. And they reform or redesign the product for you. And it's a skill. So instead of critiquing, right, instead of criticizing, you can critique it. And people are paid to just do that. They develop an app, send it to you, you use it, you tell me this icon should have been here, this color is not in the right place, you are not using the right font. And when you put this color on another color, it doesn't look well or legible enough. This is somebody's skill. Then the next pillar is content. So you have content as one of the pillars. You have people who design what they call digital art designers. You have uh, digital or graphic designers or copywriters. Those who write the text, those uh, sales products to you. Those are called copywriters. You have people who do video. You have bloggers or what, what you call vloggers. So they become influencers. You can create a channel on YouTube and start talking about your area of expertise or stories or experience, and you can make money within that space. If you want to do audio version, which you call podcasting. So podcasting is also a skill, and then content strategist. Next pillar, consumers. So when a, a company designs a product, they also want people who can understand the psyche of the consumer. Right, so they need people who like offer customer services, but for the online channels. So when people are doing customer service meeting in person, now you meet people virtually. So you need a, a, a customer service, an online customer service, or a support service provider. They have even digital customer relationship manager. So if you are into relationship management, it means that you should be thinking digital too as well, which is also one of the jobs or skills within, within that space. The next one is community. I'm sure they will give you the presentation so you will have access to everything. I have over 70 jobs listed on each of them. So uh, for community, when you have the consumers in the digital platform, because you are dealing with a networked environment or the social media space, they need people who can manage communities. So they can have somebody who manages just Facebook. So a telecom service provider can say, I need a, a channel manager or a community manager. And then you are just supposed to just manage their audience on Facebook. And then TikTok, YouTube, email, websites. So they have different community managers' roles. And they can also manage influencers on the digital media space. And they may have people, what they call a community growth manager. Your job is to make sure that you grow the number of followers they have on their social media page, the number of visitors they have on their website, and then, of course, the number of recipients for their email channels. Then we have campaign. When you are running campaigns, it's also very important. People are very creative. Sometimes when you share the content, the user content, it becomes boring. That's why companies do promotions. Right? Companies also want people who can do online campaigns that can go viral, that can, you know, have top of mind awareness and people can recall. So they want digital campaign manager, people who even develop concepts, and then creative directors for the digital media space. Right? So campaign is also very uh, uh, a, a good pillar where you can look at. Now, e-commerce buying and selling online. 
the last, uh, I think the last session, the, one of the speakers said she bought her clothes uh, on Instagram from a Nigerian company without knowing who sold the dress. So companies want people who can also help them sell products online. So you can have an online shop and they want people who should be able to even design the graphics, the products, you also take the shots, so the photographers should take the shots and they need like e-commerce managers. So if you are selling shoes, you are selling bags, or you are selling electronic products, we need somebody who can market it on, on the online channel so we can get a lot more buyers. So they need an e-commerce manager or what they call digital sales executives. So if you are a sales executive, you should be thinking digital, because very soon you may not be selling offline, you'll be selling online. So you should be thinking about that. Online inventory, we have digital payments manager, then they have within fulfillment manager, customer fulfillment manager. You make sure that when somebody buys a product online, it gets to them in the condition that they want, and then the satisfaction level that, you know, the company has promised. So we need fulfillment managers too as well. And they ha even have product marketing manager. So if you are just selling shoes, they want somebody to just make sure they sell shoes maybe to only high-end customers. And that's a skill in the digital media space, which you can also do remotely. Conversion is also another one. So conversion talks about the end results. So when you are doing all your emails and social media and everything, somebody is needed to make sure that our Facebook is growing, our TikTok videos are getting views, our YouTube you know, channel is getting more subscribers, and they want people to know, okay, we invested $1,000, are we making more profit? So those are the, the rules of the conversion managers. So the return on investment, that's the role of somebody to make sure when we invested money in our website, our social media, our app, and all that, we got returns the community of followers grew, so we have community growth manager and the conversion. They even want what they call analytics manager. Somebody who just looks at the data and can glean insights from it to say, oh, okay, every month we grow by maybe 200 fans on Facebook. On, on Instagram, you grow by 600 uh, followers. So let's invest more money on Instagram so we can get more, you know, customers. So that's it the job of the conversion, the managers, and all that. So then we have the crisis. Of course, when you are doing any business, whether online or offline, there will be crisis. So we need online reputation manager. Can you imagine? They have online reputation manager as a skill. So you make sure that whatever people are saying about your brand is positive. So you measure sentiment. So they have a, a digital public relations manager, and then you are supposed to also help man, uh, measure the sentiments of the people, how they feel about the brand on their online channels. That's a skill or a job opportunity in the digital media space. Then we have configuration, last but not the least. So the configurations, this is quite technical. So when we are hosting our website, we are making sure that the website doesn't get attacked and then there are no vulnerabilities on the platform. So we have a server administrator. So his job is to understand how servers work so that we make sure none of, <coughs> none of the online platforms is compromised. Then we have cybersecurity managers. How many of us know cybersecurity? Yeah. You have to know it if you are a digital native, right? So they make sure that nothing is compromised on the online channels that the company runs on. So they make sure nobody attacks it. There's no virus on it so that when people visit it, their, their, their devices or their channels can also be breached. So they do that. So those are configurations, and they earn a lot of money. In fact, the cyber crime skill Right? or the valuation in the cyber uh, security space is bigger than the drug industry. But I'm not motivating you to go and do it. Right? 
But if you are a cybersecurity expert, it means that companies will need you to make sure their website doesn't get hacked, their platform doesn't get compromised, everything runs perfectly. So you are the online gatekeeper. I want to end with this, the effects of digital disruptions. Now, because we've all been, we've had headed online, and COVID pushed us a lot more people onto the online platform, and globally over 600 million people went onto the online channel, right? But what has happened is that we have in a dispensation where you can work remotely using your digital skills, irrespective of where you are. So you can be in Tamale and be designing a website for a company in the US. You can also be in Boko and designing or managing an online platform for a company in South Africa. Remote work, and that happened during the COVID period. So that's one of the effects of the digital disruption. Now you can sell, Chinese people can sell in Ghana, Ghanaians can also sell in China, right? So it's open, a company, a shop, maybe in La Paz, so long as they have a, an Instagram page, can be reached globally. People sell their kente cloth and a lot of products outside Ghana, but their shop is located somewhere. They may not even have a Google map, you know, pin, but they sell products outside Ghana because of the digital disruption uh, opportunity that they have. Now you can upgrade your skills. Anything you want to learn, when you go on YouTube or any of the online channels, you can easily get it. At least the working knowledge, you will get that. Then if you want to get certified, you can go and do the industry-specific requirements. So now innovation is abundant. The skill you have, somebody also has it, but if you also don't you know, upskill up yourself or uh, get more uh, training for your skill, you may be left out. In the digital space, you are pay based on your competence and the work you do. It's very important, and it does not discriminate. Have you realized that either to the influencers that we know on social media where people could speak English? Now, there are a lot of influencers on social media. They speak local languages, and they are getting huge views and, and reviews, and they are making money online. So it doesn't discriminate, and whatever you are selling, you can also sell online. So the digital media space is the future. The digital media or the digital space is the future. Every skill you have will be formatted by the digital media uh, innovation or technology. So don't get stuck to the traditional way of doing things, but see how you can treat the skill you have with digital innovations so that it can be relevant in the age to come and in the now. Thank you very much. Kathleen Kubo Eduse. Kathleen Kubo Eduse calls herself a farmer with a sense of pride. 26 years ago, she left the UK as a banker and relocated to Ghana. And all she wanted from God was work outside the former sector. After an NGO requested for aloe vera in large quantities, this created an opportunity for her and she ended up planting culinary herbs like basil, parsley, dill, coriander and fennel and the rest is history. Today, she owns and runs Eden Tree Limited and contributes to feeding the nation, creating employment and income security for smallholder farmers. Catherine is also a champion of food safety. She believes that school farms should no longer be used as a place of punishment, but as places of innovation, farm picnics, and other exciting fun activities. With a resounding round of applause, welcome, Catherine Kobo Eduse. Hello, good evening. <laughs> I am extremely happy to be with you, okay? I'm so glad, Maxi. Me, I'm BBC. Do you know what BBC is? BBC is born before computer. You, you were born, 
computer was here. Okay? So now with the technology, me, I'm a farmer. My job is for life. We'll always produce food. You eat uh, till you go to the ground. So now, when you combine that with AI, social media, influencers, can you imagine? You just can't imagine. Okay. I will tell a story before I start my presentation. The way I work, I combine two things. God first and then work. So the story that I'm about to tell you is a living, I am the living testimony. Can you read what's on my t-shirt? Can everyone read it? Eh? Harvard mom. Okay. Now, when I came to Ghana with two babies, I didn't know what to do. I was confused. Okay. And then I prayed. God, what should I do? I was in banking when I was in the UK, but I didn't want to go back to banking when I came to Ghana. What should I do? I prayed. Something led to the other eating tree came up from my prayers. I'm just uh, uh, cutting the story short. Now, after that, I got divorced because I left my husband in the UK. He left, went to South Africa, met another woman, and started having babies. So here I am with two babies. Okay? Single parent. So I knelt down. Again, I prayed. I said, God, I have these two babies. Help me look after them. I don't want to go and knock on somebody's door. My auntie, my uncle, please help me with school fees. Eh? To pay my child's school fees. I don't want to do that. I prayed. Today, that prayer has been answered. I sent my children, my two children, to three very good schools in Ghana. The first one was Faith Montessori. The second one was Roman Ridge School. The third one was SOS International. And all of this I did from my work. Isn't God wonderful? Ah. So now today, I'm Harvard mom. <laughs> okay. So in starting my presentation, uh, Ghana will be facing food security issues within the next 10 years if we don't revamp raw material production. Right now, there's a current raw material shortage. And my presentation is very simple. I made it simple so that everyone can understand. I'm sure most of us here know that we can't get tomatoes. There's a shortage of tomatoes. Yes? Okay. Lack of tomatoes in the country due to security threats in Burkina Faso and armed robbers on the highway attacking the ladies who go to buy the tomatoes from Burkina Faso to bring it to us in Ghana. That is a problem. Okay. And for me, what are opportunities? Opportunities stem out of problems, right? When there's a problem, an opportunity is there to do what? To solve the problem. Okay. So with the problems in the fruit and vegetable sector, with lack of tomatoes in the country, what is the solution? In my view, the solution is to be able to produce tomatoes needed for Ghana in Ghana. That is the solution. We cannot rely on forever importing tomatoes from Burkina, Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast. We are all here. When COVID hit us, what did we do? 
we had to go inward. Okay. Now, another problem is excessive taxes. And now, there's a pre-VAT drive at the port. When I say pre-VAT drive, it means that right now what's happening is that when containers coming with food, like maybe a container of carrots, a container of potatoes, a container of onions, because we do import all these things into Ghana, believe it or not. What we produce in Ghana is not enough for us. We have to add 94,000 to the 50,000. What will happen? This cost will be passed on to the consumers. And the problem is that this will make those things that are being imported, their prices will triple and quadruple. Okay? And eventually, it will create a gap because our local production is not meeting up with what we are importing into the country. Solution, to increase local production in volumes to fill the gap imp that imports will create. And I mean volumes. Local production at the moment is small, small, small. We have lots of old men, old farmers. Youth are not going into farming. So old farmers. And they are only managing one acre, two acre, five acres. We are talking volumes. This needs to be a commercial farm. Uh, one container of carrots that comes in is 40 tons. 40 tons, that's just one container that has come in. With the small, 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 small volumes, two kilos, five kilos, 10 kilos, you have to collect from so many smallholder farmers before you can get some sort of quantity that will work. Number three, problem. Old methods and manual way of production. Now we are talking AI. You go, there's something like a speaker. It's talking to you. You ask it. Where is Google? Where can I go? What do I do? You are getting the feedback. And meanwhile here, we are using hoe and cutlass to farm. Look at the gap. Just look at the gap. It's too wide. Solution, adopt modern methods of production through digitization, modern equipment to enable volumes irrigation for dry season, and plan for floods during wet season. Plan, plan, plan. Problem number four, not identifying market before going into production. Solution, research into crops that are needed. Research into supply and demand. Find the market for your production before you start producing. Plan your quantities from enough initially and increase quantities as your market expands. Opportunity. I started it in three. Uh, we started with two employees, now we are 62. Now, eating tree is also an opportunity. <laughs> eating tree is an opportunity. We have a market. However, we struggle for raw materials. So therefore, we offtake from quality producers for our market. So if you produce quality products, we buy it from you. That's an opportunity. Five, problem, lack of wisdom to push knowledge acquired. This is where I say I work 
two ways. Number one, first with God. And number two, I do the work. Constant prayer for wisdom to direct their knowledge towards what has been deposited in your heart to do. And when you don't have any idea on what you will be successful at, go to God for direction as he knows what you will be successful at. There's no two ways about that. He knows. You don't know, but he knows. Keep an open mind and don't look down on an idea deposited in you because it does not fit into your idea of what is attractive or what seems respectful. I always use this as an example. Zoom Lion, when he started, people will probably look down on what he was doing. Today, look. Where is he? Where is Zoom Lion today? Okay. So, don't have in your mind, oh, I'm looking for a tie, suits and tie, and then air condition in the office. And when you don't get that, then that's it. Forget it. You are done. No. Keep an open mind. So I'm about to end, and the last bit, can you, that one is not part of the presentation. I'm finished with the presentation. Can you imagine you are producing tomatoes in large volumes? You are using AI. You have a central point. Before you harvest your tomatoes, you have had a deal with, I don't know, the most influential influencer. I don't know who it is. You know, you people, you know. Me, I'm BBC. So the, uh, you, the youth. Who is the top influencer? I don't know who. Do you have a name? Can someone mention a name? Eh? What? Me, I'm not hearing the name. Oh. Eh? Okay. So imagine you have a deal with this influencer and you tell this influencer, market my tomatoes. Tell everybody that tomatoes is at this central point. It is ready. Just the influencer alone talking about it. You will see the number of people that will come to your central point to buy their tomatoes. You have distributed information on your tomatoes, your location, your price, the pictures of how your tomatoes look like on social media. You have central points in all the regions of Ghana. Every household in Ghana uses tomatoes in their food processing. What is the population of Ghana? 30 million plus. Can you imagine how much tomatoes you will sell? Think of the possibilities of combining modern technology, AI, in farm production and distribution. So me, I'm doing it the BBC way. You are supposed to come and do it better than I am doing. Thank you. Let's go back. A round of applause for... So while they get, while they get the place set up, join, join me in this, this corner. Come, come this way, please. Let me, let me get your attention. Come, come over. So here I am standing there thinking, you know what? A combination of the two of you will literally change the whole world. <laughs> how, how many of you felt that way? That a combination of the two of them will change the whole world? Because 
your first slide was was it meant to shock us the slide about food security everyone is saying it but you said in the next 10 years will it be, what, what is your prediction about the issue of food security is the world saying that if nothing changes by that time there will be no food to eat or what The population is growing, and our production levels are low. How do we keep up? So it's going to get to a point, there will not be enough food for everybody. There will not be. Some of the, some of the doomsday theorists say it will lead to a food war if nothing is done. Yes. What does it actually mean? Well, that means that if in the West they need food and they don't have, they will come and fight with us to take <laughs> the small food that we have. You know, they'll take it away. Maximus, yes, <laughs> I, I was watching you say that your, your last slide or your last comment was that every single job we do will be or is being redefined by AI yes. and by emerging technologies. Before we sit down and start this conversation, tell me which of the things she said caught your attention so much because you were like this one, technology can solve it one time. Tell me one thing, just one thing. It's a lack of wisdom. So we can have an AI farmer, right? So we can have a, a farm that is fully automated. So whilst you are sleeping, the machines are planting, monitoring the, the plants, the, the yield level, making sure disease control is, is, is taken care of, and they can do all the harvesting and program it for, for, for the market. So we can use artificial intelligence to run that. You know what? Let's sit down and have this conversation. Catherine, sit down. Maximus, sit down. Let's put that together for our, our resource persons. All right, so I have a thousand questions, but I'll hold mine because you are, the, um, you are the ones running the show. This is your turn now, and if you just joined us from any part of the world, the voices you have been hearing are the voice of Maximus Ametogo. He is the the CEO of Pop Out, he calls the startup tech company, but trust me, he's not a startup. <laughs> and then Catherine Crowboy, you say, my favorite farmer and the CEO of Eden Tree. So we'd like to hear your questions. If you are here in person, please line up behind the microphones. We'll take as many as we can, give you short answers so we can get as many as we can. And then if you are watching us online, please write your questions. Uh, in the chat box or the comment section of the, the stream that you are watching it at. Let me pick the thoughts of any of us here in person. If you have a question that you'd like to ask, just go to the mic, give me a smile and ask me a question. All right, while they get it ready, let me see if I have any questions online to ask. All right, so policy. Policy, or let, let me go to the idea about don't look down on an idea because of your preconception of what is attractive. Um, Catherine, how do you address the fact that something that we all grew up knowing to be such an integral part of our lives has been made to look so unattractive at a time when we literally are about to go into a crisis because of lack of adequate supply? Okay. It's because of how we've projected it. Okay. How many success stories do we have? Really, I think what we should have is we should have farmers who are driving BMWs and Mercedes. Do you understand me? When they are on the farm, they are in their working clothes. But after work, they should look the part. I think that is when, you know, we'll start respecting that profession. But because uh, people, you know, they feel there's no money, the, the youth is not in there, so their knowledge is old knowledge that is just being circled around. So there's nothing about it at the moment that is attractive, and that's the problem. I know a number of top-level corporate people who spend all their weekends on their farms outside Accra, but they never talk about them. Why? We also have the issue of people don't 
want to project a certain image because they are worried, you know, because uh, they tend to get targeted. I don't know why that is, but it's a problem that we have in Ghana. You know, you don't want people to know. If you are farming, you still want people to think that, okay, you are not successful. Maybe you are doing very well, but you will not project it. Let me go to the, um, the questions from the audience. Your first name and then your question. Um, good evening. Yes. My name is Frank, and my question is, talking about raw vegetables, these are always seasonal, and then they are perishable products. How do you overcome this um, without using harmful chemical products in your production? How do you overcome um, could you the perishability? Increase again on your mic. I'd like to hear the question very clearly. Okay. Your first name first, and the question. OK, my name is Frank. Frank. Frank, OK. okay. And my question is, talking about raw vegetables, um, sometimes they are seasonal products, and then they are always perishable. So how do you overcome the perishability without using harmful um, chemical products in your production? Thank you. Thank you, Frank. I got your question now about perishable products. Let me take two more questions, and then I'll ask uh, resource persons to answer. Yes, sir. My name is Alvin Lanyo. And I would like to ask, as the world is moving to the virtual um, space, how will we still be relevant with our current roles? And what are the things we'll need to learn to, um, how do I put it, to be able to relate in this new space very efficiently? Because I understand that everything is going to change with the way we interact with our environment. Phones are going to phase away, and we are going to start reacting with virtual things in our physical reality. So I would like to know what are the things we need to start learning now so that we do not get left behind. Actually, this question, Maximus, the same question was on my mind. What kind of learning, what kind of operation must we do to operate in the space you are, you are talking about? Let me take the third question, then I'm going to come to you. I'm noting all of them down. Yes, sir? My name is Nyamiche. Yamiche. Yamiche, okay. okay. My question goes to Mr. Maximus. And the question is, what advice will he give to um, a student who is interested in starting his or her own tech-related venture or becoming an entrepreneur in the IT industry? And also, how can the person leverage his time as a student to gain practical experience and build a strong professional network in the field of IT. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. We'll come back to you, but please line up if you have a question there. So, Catherine, let's start with the first question from Frank, who's saying, let's face it, some of these vegetables you mentioned are perishable. How do you stay in that space and do business there without introducing too many chemicals into your production? Okay, first of all, uh, we are not supposed to introduce too many chemicals. Uh, I'm very, f I'm food safety uh, conscious, and whatever we produce must be good uh, for us to eat. The thing about perishability is that even today, the foods, what we are producing, is perishable. And it's all about planning. You know when I said when you combine AI and influenza and all that, you plan. So you are harvesting tomorrow. Plan it such that you are going to sell most of your produce. You factor in a percentage that will perish. That should be part of your program. That one, you can't do away with it. But if you market your products well and you are able to sell 90%, then there's no problem. Thank you very much. Let me go to you, Maximus. And the question, not just from the question number from myself and several people listening to you, what do I need to learn to operate in some of the spaces you are mentioning? Because the tendency sometimes is that when you list some of these high-tech jobs there, if you can give me the slide again, um, if you can give me Maximus' slide, some of the jobs you, mentioned, you, you, you put out there, somebody will say, hmm, 
this one, maybe it is outside Ghana. It's not applicable to my situation. What kind? Go to the next, the, the one where he lists some of the jobs. No, the, the jobs he listed. Yeah, so this is... Uh, Please continue. Yeah, so, okay. So, uh -huh. so, some of these jobs you are mentioning, what kinds of skills does a person need? What kind of education to operate in these spaces? I think the initial thing is your interest is very important. And then look at the traditional skill you currently have. If you are into marketing, maybe you should add digital to it so that you become a digital marketer. If you are into customer service, you add uh, the online customer service angle to it. So read more about it. I'm sure if you pick the slides, you see a list of all the job pillars I mentioned. Whether you are into content development, if you can talk, you can be a, a, what they call a vlogger. You talk on video and make money. That is talking, it's natural with you. If you can write well, you can also be a copywriter. So you can write to sell products or you can write for companies and make money. So at least have that interest, have a traditional skill and see whether you can digitalize that traditional skill. And also look at the extent to which digital innovation will also take away your job. So that you find a way around it, so you get a skill that will make sure you still get a job or move to another you know, space. So that's what we do within this, uh, the digital marketing space. So all the over 73 jobs that I've listed, you can pick any of them and then see which one fits your, your natural interest or your traditional skill. And then develop the, uh, the interest for it. Educate yourself within that space. Talk to people within that space then you see where you can also fit yourself. And of course, you have to make money. So you have to see which one will make you more money, either locally, remotely, or wherever you want to work. Um, Catherine, you mentioned the fact that just the, the demand you have in Eden Tree is more than the supply. That means for the, the factory and you therefore give opportunity to farmers. What would you say to somebody who um, is complaining that they went to farming and like a friend of mine says he produced carrots and they were so much that they, they got rotten and then now he was a bit scared about going into farming again. How, how can we marry their experience and the opportunity that you present? So that's, that's why I said find the market. You know, with everything that you do, you have to research. You have to learn. Nothing just drops on your lap. Find the market. If you want to grow carrots, find the market. Where are you going to sell that carrots? You know, what is the demand? If the demand outstrips the supply, then you go into carrot production. And you would have come to someone like me, and I say, okay, this is the quantity of carrot that I can take from you on a weekly basis. Do you understand? So grow the carrots, and then I'll t take it off you. But you must find the market. What sometimes people do is they get up, they decide, okay, I want to grow carrots. Then they go and grow carrots. After they've grown their carrots, and their carrots are ready, now they go look for markets. Because of because it is perishable, by the time you actually find someone who's going to buy it of you, it's, it's, it's getting spoiled. Interesting. So there is, a, 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 there is high demand, and there's also, in some cases, excess supply, but they are not meeting. And that's where you must come in, Maximus. But before you come in, let's go to... Um, there's a one question hanging, if you can quickly speak to you from Nyamiche. Your advice to a young tech, a potential tech entrepreneur who wants practical experience, your advice to a young person who wants to go into you. Yes, for, for tech, for me, it's just learning. Talk to people in the space. There are challenges within that space. Sometimes you have to pound, pound some path alone because you know you can see the vision or the future. So you have to, you know, struggle a little bit, go through the challenges. So when, the, when you start reaping the efforts, 
of going alone, of course, everybody will be, will be envious or they'll be excited for you or they may have interest in that space. So talk to people. Know where you can start using the less resources that you have, the time that you also have. For, for me, understanding the opportunity within the space and finding your perfect fit is the, is the beginning. Don't just go because everybody is doing fintech. You also want to go into fintech. The resources you need to start a fintech company, the resources you need to pay for licenses, and you may not have it. The technical skills that you even need to build a platform that will be certified or uh, approved by Bank of Ghana, you may not have that. So start with a website. Start with social media management. Make some money, then you start moving into product development. Then you start developing your own e-commerce platform. Amazon and the rest, they started selling books online. Now you can buy almost anything, even a helicopter on Amazon. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can buy almost anything on that platform. Now they are buying physical shops. So they are going back to the physical model again, but it's powered by technology. So now they have what they call <clears throat> uh, go, to, uh, go out shops, where you walk into a shop, you have your phone in your pocket, you pick any product you want and walk out, and you pay automatically, AI driven. So that's where the future is heading. So, but you have to start from somewhere. Start from somewhere is the word. Let me take two questions from here, and then I'm going to come back to you. But before your question, um, let me acknowledge some online participants. Jennifer Akusia Ochiri says, great presentation. Um, I've enjoyed today's session. Manye Sakua Saki says, thought provoking. You guys are making people think too hard. All right, let's go to you. Yes, your, fir your first name and your question. I'm Moses. Moses, okay. okay. At first, we were known to organic foods. But today, because of the high demand of foods, we are no more getting these foods again. So my question to our mom is, how then do you advise farmers of today because of the high demand of food? How then do they farm and then farm and then get organic food today? All right, Moses, thank you very much. Let's receive um, the question from our friends from the demonstration school. My name is Clifford Asante. Clifford. Asante. You know, I really want to learn this language. I'm very happy we have learned something about digital and how to market our products online. As we the dev, we, we, uh, we always learn through videos and other things. So how can you help us uh, to use videos to learn online? So you're saying that typically the deaf person learns from videos? Yes. Or you look at, you watch videos, so how do we use yes. videos? How, yes, how can we use videos? Okay, thank you very much. So Clifford, are you the same person who asked the question last week? Yes. Clifford, I think you want to be, you are, you are a very good um, policy advocate. So when they close, come and sit by me, we'll have a little conversation, okay? I want to be your friend, okay? <laughs> Let's put hands together for Clifford. <laughs> Just for asking, just for, just for asking another question, Clifford, come for, give Clifford another book, a different book. Last week you gave him Snakes and Ladders. So give him from the other pack. Jifa will give you a book. Ah, there you go. Clifford, last week you won a book called Snakes and Ladders. Come for another book. Pull him. Somebody's nudge him. Yes. Ask questions. Ask difficult questions. Max Boss says, Charlie, the videos you people are producing by the day, Clifford wants to watch the videos, but the videos have sound and he can't hear. What, what, what do you do? I think it's, it's, it's quite unfortunate. You see, everybody has the skill, the ability to innovate. And the, the restrictions in presentations, in terms of having somebody, you know, doing the sign language so that they can also understand and appreciate what they can do with their, their God-given potential is, is quite unfortunate. And I think that... Clifford and your interpreter, what, please come. No, let's, let's try something. Clifford yeah. and your interpreter, please come. Let's, let's see whether we can bridge this gap. I'm trying to understand. Is, is it okay? 
Yeah, come, come, come. So, um, ah, excellent. So, Maximus, please come. Let's, let's, let's have a conversation with Clifford. So, the, what about the videos that, what about the videos that when you show, the text comes under it? Clifford, does it work for you? Yes, so subtitling. So subtitles, we can do does it work subtitle for you? and captions that you can read. Sometimes, yes. Uh, what what will make it? What will make it easy for the subtitles to help you? The videos, it should be simpler, or what? All right. You know why I'm having this conversation with Clifford? For all you know, there is somebody here thinking of a solution. And if you are able to adapt your solution such that the person with um, a hearing impairment can enjoy your product, there will be big multinational agencies that will be willing to pay so that no video or no content will be inaccessible to this wonderful group of people. So why I, the reason why I'm calling Clifford is that if somebody can pay attention to that segment and design to seal their needs, there could be the funding, the opportunity. So look beyond that small space you are looking at and see how um, this could work for you. What's your name, mom? Hi. Anna, you bring the children, then they ask questions, and then they get books. But well, you haven't gotten a book so far, you see. Okay. Anna, give Anna a book for me. And let's put it out here for Anna and Clifford. Thank you, Maximus. Thank, <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank and you. I, I Catherine, how, Rev, how, how Rev, do you Rev. feel about you know, the fact that we are, we are including our friends from the... Demonstration you school. know, uh, my, I just thought about it and I was telling myself, okay, there's someone who's doing the sign language. Can you imagine if they collaborate? If there was a situation where they can collaborate, they understand her, she then, uh, does the to the video, language. does the, and then it's recorded. I don't know. It's, it's collaboration. I think the video insects that they have is fantastic. And then there's a young guy, I think in Kenya or one of the African countries, who has developed a, a gloves that do use sign language and you hear it in audio format. Wow. So that's another innovation coming up. Wow. Before I go back to my next question, Moses is asking about organic foods. Moses' question presumes that we no longer do organic foods. Is that a situation? Um, yes, it's reduced because of population growth. Uh, organic farming... Uh, you know, you don't get volumes, okay? But with the population growth, we all can't go on organic farming. So there has to be conventional farming as well. But however, organic farming is there. It's just that it requires a premium. So there are farmers who do organic and they sell at a premium. Excellent. Good, 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 good. Okay, let me go to you. Your, your name and your question, please. Okay, my name this is, is the last The last batch, so we can, so don't have, don't add on to the queue. Yes. Okay. My name is Alvin, and I would like to ask, with the introduction of concepts such as AI, AR, and VR, traditional jobs and interaction will change. They'll become outdated. So I would like to know, how do we brace ourselves with these changes? What it will mean for a developer? And how, as a business person, will I take advantage of these tools to build a business empire? For example, we have tools online, let's say ChatGPT. You can basically do the job of, it can basically do the job of 10 people in your company right now. So how do I take advantage of these tools, make um, the most out of it with AR and VR, make those changes, and make myself a business empire? Just as... Um, Miss Kovo Duse said, automating her uh, farm. What, what is this your name is? What is your name is? Alvin Lanyo. Alvin? Yes. So Alvin, can you summarize your question in about 10 words? <laughs> sure. Sure. How to make use of tools such as AR and VR with AI to... Um, Build a business empire. Yes. When you finish building that empire, come and look for me, I'll be here. <laughs> I'll come for the commissioning... <laughs> and celebrate you. Alvin, you are, you are a big man. Let's put our together for Alvin. Hey, Charlie, he wants to build an empire. All right, yeah. thank you very much, Alvin. I like you, I like you. 
Next. Okay. My name is Patrick. Yeah, and my question goes to Mr. Maximus. I want to ask, with the introduction of the AI, let's, um, I think Madam Katrin made a point about people not really going to the production. And they are saying that with the introduction of AI, people can, uh, the farmer can have knowledge about AI and also get machines that can operate with AI. And then the machine can what, um, regulate your crop yields and then control pests. And then those things too are a job of individuals. So don't you think that the AI is, more, is causing like more unemployment in the country rather than creating jobs? <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's go to the next one. I'll cluster them so we can answer them. <laughs> is AI causing more harm uh, or creating jobs? OK, next one. OK, my question is to Madam Your first Katrin. name. Richard. Richard. Yes, to Madam Catherine. And then the question is about, you made mention that um, Eden Tree um, gives or has room for opportunities. And then with that, they are sort or they are getting some items from other companies. And since you are buying those items from other people, I would like to get um, a clarif clarification on such items that are being bought. And then with the to Sir Maximus, you made mention that the the job opportunities that you listed, is it um, globally or related to Ghana or your company specifically? That's what I want to Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Richard, I think he answered that question first, so I'll skip that one. And this, this line, please hold on. Let's get quick answers to the questions that we have, and then I'm going to come back to you. So, um, Maximus, Alvin wants to build a business empire. He wants to know how does he use these tools, he listed them to build an empire, and then at the same time, um, is it Richard is asking, or the, the, the person before was asking, is AI not causing more problems <laughs> than, than the jobs it's creating? So combine the two for me. You know, it's quite exciting. When, when, you know, we used to be traditional, when there was no computers, people thought people would lose their job. Computers came and they are billionaires in the tech space. Human beings are quite innovative. They are very innovative. They will always find novel ways around scarcity or lack. So that is going to happen. We will innovate around it. Now, currently, AI will create over 60 million jobs, but 80 million jobs will be lost. So there will be 20 million deficit there. But we will find a way around it, right? So that's what I want to say about that. The virtual reality, augmented reality, of course, that's the future. We want to feel natural in the virtual space. That is why Facebook has started the metaverse. The metaverse is what they call presence. They want to create presence in the, in the, on the internet so that you won't be seeing just text and images again. You'll be seeing human beings in a virtual form. That's how the, the, the virtual reality and augmented reality and they've invested a lot of money in that space. Now, can you imagine fashion designers are creating digital fashion for the metaverse? So you go there, you buy a jacket, you buy a suit or whatever clothing, you want to wear your avatar and you pay for it. So if you're a fashion designer, you should be thinking about designing for the digital platforms and making money. There are even people who design art, framed art. So if I have a, a virtual office, I can go and buy a framed art and hang it in my virtual office. So if you log in, you want to have a meeting with me, you can see the framed art. So if you are an artist, AI is not coming for a job, but I have to go digital with it. Now all the jobs I've listed, these are Ghana-related jobs. I've not added global ones because some of them, when they pick even engagement, online engagement, they have interaction engagement, they are interaction, you have feedback strategists, you have a lot of them detailed. So these are Ghana related. When I'm about to close, I'm going to ask you, how does a parent do career guidance for your child? When you yourself the parent, the things you're talking about, you don't know. I'll ask you that one to close. But Catherine, <laughs> Catherine, um, I think Rob, Richard wanted to know, when you say you support, you patronize, other farmers' products. I think Richard has you as his target. So he's asking, what do you buy from those farmers? What products, which farm products do you buy? Okay, so at the moment, that's why I said 
you have to study the demand and supply. So I can at least mention three things that right now demand our strips supply, which is carrot, tomatoes, and lettuce. Where's Richard? One, carrots. Two, tomatoes. Three, lettuce. If you are watching us online from any part of the country, please, the answer is one, carrots. Two, tomatoes. Three, lettuce. Before I come to the last batch, Reverend Emmanuel Alomenu is watching us from Maryland, the USA. He says, great information. Gloria um, Onyema Aik says, I love the breakdown. Um, Divine Adam says, watching you live. Um, Gloria Onyema says, God is wonderful. And all those um, watching us online, thank you for joining us. Let's come to you and hear you. Please, my name is John. John. Yes, please. Okay, John, go ahead. Please, my question is to Madam Krobo Edisei. Um, she made a career transition from banking to agribusiness. I want to ask that what are some of the challenges she anticipated facing? And then how was she able to overcome these challenges when she was faced with them? And then also, what advice would she give to someone who is not into that field, but then want to enter into agribusiness? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great question. Challenges, solutions, and advice to potential entrants. Beautiful. <laughs> Yes. Good evening. My name is Franka Pintin. My first question is, what step has your company taken to minimize the impact of agriculture on natural resources such as water, soil, and biodiversity? Thank you very much. The impact of agri on natural resources. Thank you. Soil, water, and biodiversity. Please, I'm Shadrach. Um, please, I want to know um, if there are funding opportunities or grants for someone who wants to come into um, farming or agriculture. I've realized that um, uh, startup challenges or pitching camps are more focused on technologies instead of going into the agriculture aspect. So I want to know if there are grants or funding that help people like myself or my colleagues that wants to go into um, agriculture and fund their businesses. Thank you. Shadrach, thank you very much. Um, let me take the last one and then we'll answer the questions. My name is Godfred. And Godfred. My, yeah, and my question is to Mr. Maximus. Yeah, the question is, what education will you give to a person who wants to engage is for a business with a digital world, and then the challenges one might or may face, and then things one should do to stay relevant. Thank you very much, very much, Shadrach. I got first, sorry. All right. Advice you give to somebody who wants to, um, to stay in the space and how to stay relevant. That is from Godfrey. And while you are, um, I think those are the, that's the main question for you. I'll come to Kathy. You have three questions. So let's answer God first one. Right. Sorry. So for me, you must always know more than you need. I always tell people, always know more than you need. And you'll be needed more than you know. Right, so keep learning, read, expose your mind to a lot of things. Whilst you are exposing your mind to a lot of things, your instinct will be sifting the information and you'll be selecting the right ones to do. As for job security in the digital space, trust me, it's not guaranteed. So you must always start following the innovation curves. When people start Sorry. So when, when people started some tech companies, they didn't know that new innovations would come and wipe them out. You know, when the CEO of Nokia was asked why Nokia has collapsed, 
He was in tears and said he never did anything wrong. But the issue is that somebody innovated, disrupted that space, and they've eaten their cake. So even in the digital space, those of us doing social media, trust me, in the next five years, nobody will need your skill because most of these platforms will be automated. Now, Google search, they are now virtualizing it. So now you can talk to Alexa. You can use Siri. So you don't need to query the platform physically again. You just talk to the platform and it will respond. So all those things are being, innov uh, innovation is disrupting that. Now they are scared of chat GPT. Because now chat GPT will not just fetch the information for you, but it will curate it, it will present it in a format that will ask it to. So it will become like your research assistant than just a virtual assistant. So all those people doing research and analysis and the rest, chat GT, uh, GPT will come for your job too as well. And another technology will come and then chat GPT will be like an old tool that we, we, we forgot like 10 years ago. So it's going to happen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let me take the last round of the questions. And I promise to come back to you the question of um, the parent who is lost trying to teach the child who is confused. So let me take the last three questions for you, Catherine, and bunch them together. Um, John wants to know the challenges that you faced um, and how you overcame them. And then there's a question also about how do you minimize the impact of that Greek you do on natural resources, biodiversity, water, soil. And of course, um, th there's also Shadrach who's saying the cash, the cash. Why doesn't the cash go towards agri and it goes towards tech? Why does the cash go, go towards tech? What, wh where can he find the cash for oh, agribusiness? When can, oh, where can he find the cash? Yes. Okay, uh, he can talk to guys like he can come. You know people, you know those we'll, who we'll, are investing we'll share some, funds. We'll share yes. something with him before yes, we close. So, uh, uh, one thing that there's a fantastic tool, which is Google. Okay, go to Google, you'll find all sorts of things there. You can say, okay, Google, I'm looking for a fund. Okay, that will help me uh, uh, with a, a startup, starting a farm. Google will give you options and you try. One may come through. You know, at least if you try, you've tried. But Google has so much, anything, even learning, you want to learn. Eh? Go to Google. You know, Google will give you a course. I mean, Google is a fantastic tool. Thank you. So Before we sign off, on this, there's a couple of other questions that, um, the, the, um, the question about the impact of agri on the environment. Yes. Did, did you speak to that one? Yes. Um, uh, when I heard that, my mind went straight to the Garden of Eden. You know, that is what we are supposed to use for farming. Farming, basically, soil, seed, and water. That's how you grow food. Unless someone can tell us that we have to stop eating. <laughs> you know, there's nothing we can do about it. But what we need to do is how to tap the wasteful resources. Like, for example, when the rains come, it floods, and then all the water goes back into the sea. There should be engineers who are developing ways and methods of trapping that water that we can use for farming. Okay. Closing questions for the two of you. Um, and just to um, give some comfort um, to Shadrach, who asked about financing opportunities. The team from the MasterCard Foundation would like you to know that the MasterCard Foundation part has partnerships with opportunities that young people can access in the area of agribusiness. And if you are here, your first step is to make sure you go to their desk and get onboarded. Once you are onboarded and you are in the system, you can ask questions and you can be pointed to programs that provide opportunities. Maximus says, get into the ark. Once you're in the ark, you can navigate your way around. Once you're outside, you don't know what's happening. So please, if you are not yet 
um, onboarded or signed up to the program, um, go, go to the desk and you can be helped to get on board. Closing question. What should we do? Let me start with you, Catherine. And you, you have your question waiting already. So let me ask you your question and you think about it. I'll go to him and come back to you. So your question is, what should we do differently to make agribusiness not something that people just branch to do when they hear something like this, but the first choice of that young person who knows the opportunities are abundant. When I come back to you, that will be your closing question. Maximus, in one minute, for the parent who says, I want to guide my child based on what I know, but I'm hearing these things and realizing that what I know is totally outdated, what should they do? I think we just make inquiries. Go to the schools where they do the training, do some research, talk to industry experts, and then they will guide you as to what to do. And of course, the interest of your, of your child. Sometimes, if you, if, you, if you numb the interest of the child, you'll be, they, they will feel frustrated. Some can draw. They can go into illustrations. They can do graphic design. They can go into digital arts. But we say, oh, stop drawing. You are wasting time doing drawing. You have to learn maths. Meanwhile, they are not maths inclined, right? But if you talk to the right people, just the drawing alone can make them into millionaires if you guide them the right way using the digital tools and channels. Yeah. Question B. Question 1B. <laughs> if, if the young person trying to convince the parent knows genuinely the opportunities in the market, how do they get the parent to be on the same page? Because the parent has invested and it's a serious stakeholder. What should they do? Yeah, so do some research. Get reliable sources of information about the industry you are interested in. Whether it's Google or whatever uh, industry journal that is online, copy the link and send it to your parents to read. I'm sure when they read and do their research, they will know that what you are saying is true. One parent said the child brought a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> and then finally, the parent was convinced a PowerPoint. Exactly. All right, Catherine, closing question. How should we do it differently to make agriculture and agribusiness not the second choice or third choice, but the very first? for a young person looking at the future? Let's showcase the success stories in agric. That's what we need to do. Showcase, showcase success, success stories. stories. That's why you're like here. Like you're doing now. Harvard mom, and just, to, just and you didn't tell us why you are Harvard mom, but I can tell you that um, Catherine's son went to Harvard and she just returned from the US for the graduation. You can farm and take your son Woo! to Harvard. Congratulations, Catherine. What a blessing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maximus. Let's appreciate Catherine and Maximus as they go back to their seats. Let the applause continue till they sit down. Absolutely amazing. Amazing. Roslyn. So, so what's the one big thing? How many of you are on social media? You're on social media. Maximus says, use social media profitably. R go on your social media and write one big takeout, one big lesson you've learned tonight. I think it's a, a very useful way to use social media. So the selfies are nice, but write one lesson, one thing you've learned. If you're watching us online, on the chat, just write one thing you have learned, one thing you have learned. I have learned that whatever you are doing from Maximus, whatever you are doing is being redefined by AI. It's much bigger than you. you. You said it so calmly, but it's a very serious issue. And Catherine, your point about, your questions and your answers, very simple but very serious, that there is going to be a big food security issue in the next 10 years if we don't change our approach to food and farming. I've taken it very personal and very seriously. Your one lesson, Rosalind? Um, I think I was also shot by this is, um, COVID research thing. But I just want to find out, so can we start small? Because nowadays our homes are all concrete. So maybe we can move from that and then start with backyard farming, little by little, gradually, and I think we should be there. I met somebody yesterday who, who said, who gave me two plants that they've not bought in their home for the past three years. I felt very ashamed, but I got comforted by the fact that Comfort also has some small one be there behind our house. The, 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 the fruits have not yet come. When they come, I'll take a picture and show it to you. Or oh, I've eaten them without knowing. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. 
So just before I do the, I know after I do the draw, you won't listen to the game, so let me give you the big announcements before, before we do the draw. For those of you here in New Wine, tomorrow we start our 40 days of power. Catherine says, after all the hard work, I like that, I like that. After all the hard work, you also have to pray to God for guidance. So tomorrow we start our 40 day fast, 40 days of fasting and prayer. Just inviting um, you to join us every evening at 6.30 p.m. for a, a time of prayer. We want to trust God for wisdom, ideas, direction to be able to do the things that we do. Prayer has a very important place in building your life and your career. So tomorrow evening and every weekday at 6.30 we'll be here. Make time to join us and let's pray as we trust God for ideas and for direction. My story... Um, um, Catherine, it's about a particular year, 2000 or so, when I was prayerfully relaxing in bed and I got an idea at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. I, I remember because I keep a diary or a notepad by my bed at all times. And that idea in the next year generated 40% of our company's turnover. <laughs> is there not a place for prayer? Is there not a place for prayer? It is. Yeah, there's a place for prayer. But there's a place also for hard work. All right, so here we go. Are you ready for the draw? Are you ready? Genevieve, bring the ball and let's see the first, the third prize first. Let me give the last announcement because I know after that you won't listen. After this, after this, we have a setup of a wonderful setup for a refreshment and a cocktail interaction with all the CEOs here. We are so privileged today to have the widest array of CEOs and mentors that we've ever had. I can see from, from real estate to media to food, restaurant, a medical doctor, a consultant. I can see um, um, an engineer. I can see an HR person. I can see all of them here and they are available and re ready to meet you. Please, they are yours for the next 40 minutes after the program runs out. And happy birthday to you, Jeremiah Boabing. Today is your birthday. Let's put our hands together for Jeremiah. Today is his birthday, one of our mentors. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right. So the, the third prize is a book and a digital watch for your exercises. Let me make sure. This is a third prize. Where is, where is, your, where is your paper? Am I blocked? Hey, hey, tell them where is your paper so I can pick it. Tell them it's a book and a digital watch. All right. It's in here. Is, is it here? Or here? Or here? Down, down, down. Ten, ten, ten. There's one that I've touched. I have a feeling that is the one. This is the winner of the book and the digital watch. A hardcover book. A thousand and one tips for an outstanding life. And the winner, hey, how can one person win twice in the same series? But I, I, I can't stop, I can't stop the person. But it's some people know how to do it too. Edna, Edna Mbwabin, your husband's birthday is today and you won, I can't, how do you do it? <laughs> how do you do it? Oh my goodness. Hey Jeremiah, come and stand by your wife. It's your birthday today. I mean, we are happy for you. It's your birthday. How old are you? 35. 35. You must be feeling very excited. You know what? I'm presenting the prize to you instead of your wife. 35th birthday, uh, you, you, present, you present to him. Okay, then present it to him. You want, oh, that's what you want to do. Oh, please tell him something. Tell him something special. He means the world to me and I love him very much. The, you, you want to fall down. The two of them got married on Valentine's Day. So, Valentine is your anniversary. And now presents the prize to Jeremiah. Oh! Rosalind, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? I, I want to do some. You want to do some? Okay. <laughs> Let's see whether you win the next one. So, Enam wins the first prize and presents to her husband who's celebrating his birthday. Oh, you want verification? Okay. <laughs> Where's the camera? Without seeing the phone number, you saw the name. So, <laughs> all right. The second prize is the two books, a thousand and one tips for an outstanding life, snakes and ladders, 
and a Samsung Galaxy A14. Who wants it? Who wants the phone? Maybe for your learning and things like that. It's, a, it's okay. Doc, Dr. Asian, sir, please come and select it. No, you're smiling as if you wanted it. <laughs> Dr. Asian, sir, one of my favorite people, very, very, very amazing person. Dr. Asian, sir, Charlie, Doc, no, 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 Charlie. So what do you do? What do you do? If your surname is Mensa, you've won. You've won the phone. Your surname is Mensa. Oh, there's only one Mensa here. Come for it. Yeah. I told you. If your surname is Mensa, come for your phone. On three. If your, if your surname is Mensa and you don't come, and it's not one of these three, I'll put it back and give it to the next person I pick. First name? Lillian. Lillian, first name? Benedict. First name? Hayford. Hayford. Hayford Lillian Benedict. Um, it's not you, so if you want a book, so thank you very much. <laughs> face them, face them. Is it, is it, is it Lillian or Benedict? I can't hear you. Is it Lillian or Benedict? How many think it's Lillian? Oh. 32%. How many think it's Benedict? No, you guys are bad people. All right. All right, Dr. Siansa, the first winner was a, a female. The second winner is... Benedict. Benedict! <laughs> Doc. Benedict Mensa. My goodness. Just like that. Can you imagine? <laughs> Benedict, you get to win a, a brand new phone. Tell it. Did you, did you think you win it? Oh, no, 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 no. But it's a, it's a surprise. It's a surprise to me, actually. <laughs> so what, what will you do tonight? <laughs> it's like my birthday tonight. Yesterday, yesterday somebody scored a hat trick in international football for the first time. And he says he will sleep with the ball and put his head <laughs> on the ball. So, so, oh, where is Lillian? Where is Lillian? Lillian, consolation prize, consolation. Lillian, where's Lillian? Oh, Lillian, come, come, come. Come and take a picture with Dr. Asian, sir. You almost, almost. T take a prize with Doc. Stand by Doc and take a picture. Uh-huh. At least you want something. One day when you become president, or she becomes UN Secretary General, you see she's your personal friend. Okay. Well done, well done, Lillian. All right, Benedict, over to you, your phone. Are you ready? Yeah. DTI, are you ready? Yeah. Demonstration school for the deaf, are you ready? Yeah. New wine, are you ready? Yeah. All right, my job is just to give out this phone, this laptop, as well as the book. Hmm. Catherine. We want to give out the laptop. We really want to give out the laptop. Since you are BBC, you come and pick. <laughs> come and pick the winner. <laughs> she said she will put her name in challenge. Stay there to, stay there to the. Hey. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, all right, all right. The winner, is it a male or female? I couldn't tell, but your phone number ends with three. 
，哦，哦，这个站，这个站，哎。Oh, I didn't finish. The phone number ends with three, but since I'm getting so many of you, the phone number ends with sixty-three. Aha! All of you are back. You see, many are called, but few are chosen. All the trees went back, and a new batch has come called 63. Uh, please show them, show them. If your phone number is 63, please come. Meanwhile, please stand here. I need to stand here. Look, look. One of you must win it too. Oh, is there anybody else with 63 here? The way you are coming casually, if you win it by you see. <laughs> what's, your, what's your first name? Senna. 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 What's your first name? Rita. What's your first name? Leon. Leon. I, I'm sure one of them has won. <laughs> Kathy, why did you, why did you react? <laughs> the winner is a female. <laughs> oh, tell it, tell it. Give me a book. Is it Senna or Rita? Senna. Pardon? Senna or Rita? Senna. Senna or Rita? Senna. Did you say Rita? Senna. Ah, UPSA says it's Rita. DTI, is it Senna or Rita? Senna. Pardon? Senna. Oh, it's mixed. Demonstration, is it Senna or Rita? Senna. Is it? Senna. Left? Senna. All right. Left. Okay, new wine. Is it Senna or Rita? Senna. This one. Yeah. Okay. Catherine, the winner of the book and the final, final prize in season two of PCH and the laptop, brand new laptop, is. Bejo Rita Yai. I can't believe it. Are you serious? Like you came, uh, tell me, tell me, tell me. Where, where, oh, you're clapping for her. You're a very nice person. What? Wow. What, what do you do? You're a student, where? UPSC. Sit by comfort, sit by comfort. Sit on my chair. Sit on my, on my chair. <laughs> sit by comfort and, and chat with her. That's your prize. She'll give you a book, have a chat with her. And you, when, uh, Rosalind, how do you feel? Are you happy for her? I'm very excited. Unfortunately, I didn't write my name. Yeah, but you're happy for her. <laughs> Which institution do you go to? UPSA. Oh, aha! Uh -huh. No wonder. So tell me, what caused you? Business administration. Business administration. I have quite a number of you here. Tell me, how relevant has this conversation, or how, what have you benefited from these conversations that have been held? It has been very relevant because per what Madam said, with the we shouldn't make our mind as if we want white color jobs, but then we should be an open-minded person. Yes, that's really helped me with that. Final question: <laughs> Ten years from now, when I meet you at London Heathrow Airport, coming back from an international conference, which conference will it be? What will you be doing then? I, I would be. Uh, also an influencer to other people, like how I've also benefited from this conference. Uh, from the business, business corporate. All right, say she'll be a big time corporate and she'll be an influencer. Rita, it's all yours. Do us the honest one more time. Yes, please present on our behalf. Celebrate with her, be happy for her. This laptop has gone to UPSC. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Rita, let's put out together for Rita as she goes back. One word, one word to describe the whole thing. One word. One word to describe the whole experience. Exciting. Exciting. What's your one word for the 11 weeks of PCH? 
Super. What other word? Fantastic, says Dr. Isi Hansan. Let me find out for the mentors. Just one minute of this. What, what word? Awesome. What word? Give me the word from them. Uh-huh. What word will you describe the show with? I, I want to hear from my friends. I, I love to hear from them. It's very important. Maximus, one word. Incredible. Dr. Panyo uh, Malioji, one, one word. Insightful. Insightful. Amos, you've done 11 weeks non-stop with only one week break. What word? Empowering. Empowering. Raymond Smith. Knowledge. Knowledge. Ike, you've done 11 weeks non-stop. You missed one la- last two weeks. Oh, you came, you came. 11 weeks. What, one word? Impactful. Impactful. Jeremiah Boabin, you've been doing this and you did um, customer service mentoring. One word? Unique excellent. Unique excellent. Hey, 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 hey. I need a new dictionary. Kwame, Kwame Mantiao, one word, you've been mentoring people on personal planning. One word. Practical. Practical, and you spoke in the second or edition or so. Madam, one word for you. Amazing. Amazing, 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 amazing. What word did they give us? Some give us wonderful, others happy. All right. Thank you all very much. You've been a wonderful, wonderful audience. We'd like to thank the New Wine Temple for giving us this amazing experience for the past 11 weeks. We want to thank the entire coordinating team here at the New Wine Temple. Let's give them a big round of applause. We'd like to thank our partners from the Ghana Growth Program, starting with the MasterCard Foundation. Let's put our hands together for them. We want to thank the Springboard Roadshow Foundation. Let's put our hands together for them. We want to thank Limehouse. Let's put our hands together for them. And then our job partners, the Access Human Capital. Let's put our hands together for them. And all our media partners, you've done a fantastic job over the weeks. And the biggest, biggest applause. Let me do it in segments. A round of applause for UPSA for being consistent. <laughs> round of applause for DTI. Round of applause for Demonstration School for the Deaf. Round of applause for all the mentors and speakers, those who came today and those who've come throughout the days. And of course, all the members of New Wine. I want to say a big thank you to all of you. It's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. We are back in August, bigger, better, and greater. But between now and August, make time to come. Let's pray and trust God that the ideas, the lessons, the concepts that we have shared, we can pray over them and they will bear fruit. See you tomorrow at 6.30 as we take time to pray. Let's rise up as we close. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you very much. If on a Sunday you are in the vicinity, join us here at the New Wine Temple, 8.30 a.m. till 10.30 a.m. God bless you. Good night. See you downstairs.